Luke and Susie live on Facebook and on YouTube, and it's uh, great to have you with us. We're, we're going to go through um, some really important things, Suze. We're going to um, give away some prizes in our Getting to Know You game, and we're going to talk about uh, the first artist we ever, uh, we've ever seen. We're going to talk about someone who you used to work for becoming you becoming their boss right. and, and switching things around, paying too much for mechanical work and my gripe over a part that I refused to pay for from 20 years ago. Okay. We're going to do that and a whole lot more. We're going to have some fun over the next period of time. It's our Luke and Susie live show discourse. Are you ready to get into it, Sue? I am so ready. Next. The Luke and Susie quotable in just five minutes, and it's talking about insanity. It's Luke and Susie with Faith Family Culture. Well, let's get into Chris's question to start us off. And the first artist that you ep- ever went to see. So, yes. Suze, do you remember the first first concert, the first artist that you saw? I can't remember which one I went to first. I You went to quite a few concerts when I was yep. younger. Um, probably I would say it was Billy Joel right, or Whitney Houston. <laughs> so that's, Maybe that's John a- Farnham. <laughs> Pretty high level to One start. One of them. <laughs> that, that's a, you just name dropping now of all you because you've been to some pretty good gigs. Yeah, I have. I have. I went to Brian Adams and Beach Boys, all kinds of things I went to. Yeah. I remember you took Royden to his first concert though, yeah. and that was for King and Country. It was for King and Country. And mm. my first one was a, a, a Christian artist as well. One that, that was in the front, not necessarily as well known as some of the big artists, but they did a tour around Australia and they went to a a school venue and our youth group went and their name was Degamo and Key. They they wrote and produced a lot of stuff that, you know, that was really, really good and successful. And their, right. their, their career together was good. But I just, what I remember standing out, because I went with the youth group, I didn't choose necessarily to go to a concert, but they were telling the story about they grew up just down the road from Elvis. And just it was this these stories of living, you know, near Elvis was just it really fascinated me. And I, I was 13 or something at the time. And I just, these this story of, down the street from Elvis just really sticks with me. And I just mm. went, that what a it was it was a thing that it was my first experience at a big event with thousands of people seeing someone perform on a stage. Like I just it just it just stood out. I mean there's been some epic U2 concerts and the 360 tour and yeah. you know Boys to Men and you know you know us being there as standing up. You were pregnant, I think, on that particular occasion. Yeah, We've been to some so good gigs, Tyson but- Tyson's first concert would have been uh DC Talk, was it? No. 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 Well, who was it that we went to? I don't know. Well, was, <laughs> oh, was it at Sunfest? Was that no, no? New, oh, News Boys? News Boys. News Boys? Because maybe? Michael Tate. Oh, yeah. Him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There was News Boys with Michael Tate at yes. the realm. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm so terrible uh, with band names. Uh, you have no bands, idea. Bands all look the same to Susie. <laughs> I didn't grow up listening to Christian music, so no. it was all all very new to yeah, me. Anyway, it's a, it's a good experience the, the first, first time ones. you actually go to a concert. Yep. Do you remember the first concert you actually went to go and see live? Yep, they can stand out to you. Annie, what was your first concert? Can you hear me? Apparently you can't you. hear me at this stage. No, we've no, got, we've you. got you. Hello. You got me now? Yep. My first, my first concert was um, I went to see In Excess, uh, the Listen Like Thieves tour, and I actually blew my eardrums. <laughs> oh, no. I went to the doctor and he said, you've either been standing in front of a 747 jet or you've been to a rock concert. So which is it? <laughs> oh, wow. What? Yeah, That's... and I've, st- I've actually still got tinnitus. How about that? That's uh, well. You you really keep reliving that first concert wow. experience. You've not let that one go. I've every I just time, every story. time, and, and yeah, and I have to keep every time I hear Michael about Michael Gadinsky, I have to keep extending forgiveness all the time. So it's a it's an ongoing journey. Yeah, as it would be, because that first concert's still ringing in her ears. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, nice, yeah, yeah. nice Thank little you. pun Thank there. Thank you very much, Russell. Do you remember the first concert you went to? I certainly do. It was um, early 80s in Brisbane. Um, yeah, I know some of your people listening, um, as before you were born, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. There was a really big name, Keith Green. Absolutely, <gasps> absolutely amazing. But you know, the best one I went to after that was a big ministry, and that was Terry Talbot in the hub of Queensland in Dolby. Now, there was a Pentecostal thing he was doing. It was just a 
God thing. And all of a sudden, people started getting saved, coming out the front, left, right, and center. And some of the elders of their church were a little bit embarrassed what was going on. But they were two outstanding concerts for two different reasons. It was wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's always, you know, the, the outstanding you know, experiences from Dolby. That's when you know you're, you're really living life to the full. When yeah, Dolby, totally. Um, yeah. Dolby, I, I was a big group. I wasn't born there, so I'll just make that for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, the first concert you ever went to, do you remember what it was? I'm trying to remember whether the uh, King and Country one happened first or Human Nature, but I remember <gasps> going to a Human Nature one because you guys gave me two free tickets. Oh, oh. yes. That was the yeah. that was the gig that I wore my pink jacket to, and it turns out that I didn't get the memo that's what the band that's was wearing. That's what they were wearing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> that was a really fun concert. Up to that one, actually, yeah. I love yeah, yeah, yeah. They were both, they were both there. We went to the same concert, yeah. I didn't Alicia. go to the full King and Country one, um, so I'm glad you got to At go. Royden, That's it was good. his first concert, he's got social anxiety, and they walked through the crowd while they were singing a song. and He put yeah. his hand out, got a high five from, from Luke from the band. And it was just like this for everybody else, it was just this kid sort of half putting their hand out, but for me, it was this. And anxiety kid who is just who took a step out of his comfort zone to yeah. have this experience. It was special. Yeah, Luke. Um, I think it was. I can't remember if it was Joel or Luke. Whoever was up on the balcony. That's where I was sitting. And he shook my hand. Turned around and shook somebody else's hand. Turned back around and shook my hand again because he didn't realize he'd already done it. I was just over the moon. <laughs> yeah, double dipping. Let's take it again. Double dipping on the concert experience. That's good. <laughs> Olga, do you remember your first concert? No, I can't recall. It's yeah, it's a bit of a haze. I can recall going to a few concerts, but I'm not sure the order. No, I remember Bon Jovi, uh, John Bon Jovi. Yeah, no. Nice. In my twenties, it's a long, long time ago. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, John, I think that may have been the first one. He was. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the I don't know what the numbers are now, but he was the number one um, touring artist in the world at one stage where you sold more tickets to each concert. Like it was big yeah. stadiums and he was the gun for hire uh, when he hit the road. It was just amazing. He what and epic songs from yeah. Bon Jovi. So good. Epic songs. Hey, this is this is awesome to walk down memory lane. Text through 0417 4 triple five three seven. That's 0417 4 triple five three seven. Karina throws in that uh, human nature. Um, was her first concert. Peter uh, Keith Urban, before he was famous and was the support act, Delta Goodrum was amazing, before Keith Urban was famous. That's, you know, that's going back away, Suze, because that's Keith Urban's just the third best thing to come out of Kabul. My mum saw Keith Urban before yeah. he was famous but when he's he was th- a kid. You, were just, you missed my moment. I said mm. he's the third best thing to come out of Kabul. You and cheese. Oh, was- <laughs> In no particular order. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, we've got, uh, what else, Lynette who says, uh, <laughs> I saw Luke at the Baptist Church in Townsville and brought my CD and my DVD and now I sucked up to you. Please make me the winner. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never forget someone uh, coming up to me and meeting me at a radio station and just going, I bought your DVD like five years ago and, oh, my gosh, can I get it signed? I'm like, that was, that's kind of cool, my comedy, seat, my comedy DVD. It's good going back in uh, many times ago. It was a while ago that you did that comedy yeah. show. Mm. Uh, Un- Undo was what Heather said as well. The Happiest uh, Refugee Tour was awesome. Brilliant. Live in theatre um, in general is great. Yeah, something we've missed the last few years of the big shows and the big experiences are going out. So SMS through. We'd love to hear your first gig you ever went to. Moving into the workplace, Luke, yep. Craig has asked a question mm. and it's an interesting one where you've got a change of relationship with a, w- a work yeah. colleague that you have. He's asked, yeah. has anyone worked with a colleague and later mm. become their boss? Yep. If so, were there any issues and how did you make it work? Yep. Oh, look. I, so I've had this experience significantly where it's um, <laughs> turned on a dime a couple of times. So I, I went into a radio station where I was uh, the breakfast host and there was a content director and within a few months that um, – they'd stopped being the content director. They'd stepped aside. I got promoted, but they kept doing casual work with the team. And so he was my boss and then suddenly I was his boss. Mm -hmm. And so now I was his content director. And then about nine months later, the general manager left and he got the general manager's job. So then he became my (laughs) boss again. (laughs) 
<laughs> so we kept jumping over the top of each other for a number of years. It was it was awkward at times, especially when um, you know, I had refused him a pay rise and then he became my boss. Um, <laughs> so, but I think we were just mature enough just to be able to like, you know, when you're in a position, you serve your leader, whoever they are. So I think we were fine. There were times it was just a bit funny, but the relationship changed, you know, quickly. But it was all right. Mm. I think it's it's a, it'll be an issue if I there were certain people that that we had problems with. I reckon there would be scenarios where it could have been difficult. Have you ever had something like this happen? Yeah, I've only been a boss a couple of times in my life. One most recently, um, where there were a couple of people that I worked with, and suddenly I was I was actually their boss. And I think we made it work just because we um, had always worked together well anyway. Yeah. And so it was just the change of role actually didn't impact the way we work together necessarily. You had a moment where your husband became your boss, mm-hmm. not your colleague, your boss. Yeah. I was actually in charge of you. You had to do what I said. Mm-hmm. At, at the work, office. At least. <laughs> <laughs> and did you do what I told you? Mostly. <laughs> if, if you did, it was with some attitude. <laughs> As long as you agreed with what I told you to do. Yeah, that was the, the, the caveat. Alison, have you had a change of relationship with someone that you've worked with? No, I haven't. Oh, hang on a second. Sorry. Go, what was that, Alison? No, I haven't worked with someone and later been their boss, but I've worked with people and we all resigned 14 years ago and we're still friends to this day. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, you make good, healthy relationships at work. That's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I, I had a situation where someone who I was the boss became the boss of. They thought they should have got the promotion and I got it in that same scenario I was talking about before. But he, he sat down and told me he should have my job. He's more qualified than me. And I said, That's fine in theory, but you wouldn't be able to handle you, um, was one of the statements I made to him at the time. But we had this open, you know, robust conversation. And there was there were challenges in the midst of that relationship to start with. But this is 15 years later. We're sitting down having a coffee, talking about this experience, and we're really good mates and colleagues and have done comedy shows together. And and it's just in the midst of an open and honest relationship, even if it's open and honest with tension. Like it's it's the thing that makes good human relationships in the mm. long term, I think. Mm, absolutely. Russell, have you ever had a change of relationship with somebody that you've worked with? Big time. I mean, major, major big time. Now, I'm not going to mention any names, but okay. there was this guy who came to my boss. He just got – the boss has made this big, huge warehouse. It was almost like the Taj Mahal. It was massive. And he gave this young fella a 20-litre drum of paint, a paint roller, pointed to – the steel beams in the building and says, I want every one of them painted. Off you go. I'll, I'll see you later. So he would move the scaffolding around. Now there was a wheel moving and he didn't even complain because the whole thing would rock when he was up there or when one of us guys shook the thing. Anyway, uh, ah! so he was up there. <laughs> so anyway, later on, he really cotton on to what we we're doing in the company. So we, he got trained up by myself and the boss and he was sent up on courses. Now later on, when I came to leave, he said to everybody, um, now, he actually just bought the company. He actually he bought the whole company. So he's now the boss of the whole lot. And he says to everybody, you know, I want to thank Russ. He taught me everything I knew. Now, the 12-year-old in my joke brain, like Seinfeld, says, yes, but I didn't teach you everything I know. But I didn't <laughs> say it. I mean, the born again part, you know, just stop me on that bit. Um, yeah. But that was, that was really good, and I'm still happy for him today. And I can ring him up any day of the week and he'll give me a better than trade discount, um, which, you know, that's where it really counts if, if he's prepared to give you the money. That, you know, that's that, putting his, the money where the mouth is sort of thing. Yeah, yeah that's it's, good. It's the classic uh, where I think it would become more difficult is when the sort of slightly mistreated employee owns the business. <laughs> then that's, that's a level yeah. of dimension that um, – yeah. Could be awkward. Yeah, we, we used to play cricket when the boss was out. Actually, I like that. Maureen, who yeah. had said that, uh, yep, she had someone tell her that she wouldn't make it in the industry, so she went another way uh, within it. And that person then later on had rung her for advice and remembered what she'd said and apologised. Again, mm. good human relationships comes from humility and, and being able to admit when you made a mistake. Yeah. Right. Well, Jessica says, um, yep, she had no issues. I found it really beneficial to ask the people what they wanted to work on and how I could help them to achieve their goals. That's a servant. Yeah. Later. I mean, you can't go wrong. With yeah, that. I think uh, this, it can be awkward in some ways, but usually, again, I'll go back to it's mostly awkward if someone is 
not doing, you know, not honoring the other person or hasn't, but then there's always yeah. a chance to make good. There's always a chance to 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 be humble and to to apologize and to to write things and you know good good things happen when you do it. So it's a great question to explore, but uh one that uh you know hopefully we can grow through if you're in a bit of an awkward situation right now. But uh Suze, um, this question that uh, we're going to deal with is, uh, is the next agenda item um, is about mechanical work. Yeah. And uh, Maureen has asked the question, has anyone ever paid too much for mechanical work and wondered if you had been scammed, like paying over $8,000 just to get the head on your car f- fixed? Now, Suze, I mean, I think I feel like I'm potentially being ripped off every time I take the car to the mechanic to get anything done. Because I don't genuinely know and things change and I don't know what I'm talking about with cars. So I have to trust them. And I hate just trusting people. Our mechanic's good though. They they are. Yeah. They, look, the reason why I go to our mechanic is for this reason because I don't know. And I, I was sitting there waiting for my car to be picked up. And there was another customer that came in and he said, look, I quoted you when we were doing the job, you know, this whatever the amount was. But when we pulled it apart, we realized there was this other issue and we had to do extra work. But we quoted you a price, so that's what we're charging you. We did that extra stuff, but just to let you know it's done. And they did not charge them anymore because they honored their word. And I and I and I witnessed this and I went, because this was the first time I'd ever been to that place. And I went, they have honor and they have integrity. And I just I liked it. I liked mm. the character that they showed to say that that even though we did this extra work, we're not trying to milk you dry. We're trying to actually get your car working Safely properly on the road. and, yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. honor our word. And we didn't tell you, so therefore we're not going to charge you. And I just thought, what a great character. So this is the place I want to go because I trust them. Mm. But I go back to years ago, my first ever car, a Mazda 626 with an electric sunroof. I was so cool. Except for when the electric sunroof stopped working. Because well, the the little windshield wouldn't fold up because there was a little little clip that was broken. I went to the to get a part, and they they quoted me. This is in mid nineties. They they quoted me forty dollars for this tiny little half a centimeter plastic clip, which I mean is the equivalent of today going. It's like two hundred dollars. Mm. That's that would be the equivalent of money spent for a half a centimeter plastic clip, and I just I refused to pay it. I went, that was the price. It wasn't someone elevating it, and I'm like, but I don't care. You can show me that that's the price. Book. You're like, I am not paying forty dollars for a half a centimeter piece of plastic. So I got a coat hanger and I fashioned my own clip, and it worked, and I never had to pay that forty bucks <laughs> ever. And my my electric sunroof started to work. Oh, it's good, Sue. So good. I distrust a mechanic started then. Well, let's see about your experiences. The question Maureen's asked is, have you ever paid too much for mechanical work and wondered if you'd been scammed, like paying $8,200 just to get the head <laughs> on your car fixed? Alicia, do you think you've ever been scammed by a mechanic? No, I haven't really given an opportunity to scam me because generally I go to my friend who's a mechanic and he just charges me for the parts. But that's when I can't be bothered doing it myself because there's a lot of stuff I have been able to do myself because I've done a cert to an automotive. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, that's okay. how you get yeah. around it. Yeah, good job. Very good. I was going to say if we <laughs> change the topic and say. Here, friend, do car. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to say if we change the topic to uh, are you a mechanic and do you ever feel like you're being ripped off by your friends, would your friend go, yep? <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't feel what that way, but I think his wife sometimes gets annoyed that he helps too much. Uh, hey, well, Melanie, a, a little bit like you, she says, uh, I never really give them a chance because I do my own mechanical work to avoid that. That's so good. That's good, Melanie. I love Funny that. I lot. have the skills. Olga, have you had any trouble with the mechanics? Well, I did recently because I generally use a regular mechanic, but he wasn't available and I needed the car serviced. And they quoted me one thing. And when they'd done the job, they put an extra amount on the the machine that I had to pay. And then after that, the car wouldn't start. And then after that, uh, the car was making a funny noise. So I had to fork out more money. Oh, oh. that's awful, Olga. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's terrible. And I had a, a case not with a mechanic, but with a tow truck driver, who I'd had an accident, and um, they 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 put it up on the on the truck. 
they were the RACQ truck. But then they said because of the scene that I wasn't covered by the RACQ for that tow and that I had to pay hundreds of dollars to get it out of their yard. But because it was up on the truck, there's nothing I could do about it. But I didn't realize it wasn't covered by the the, the RACQ. And, and this is when I was a teenager. And, and I was devastated. I had to fight really hard. There was nothing I could do. I lost. I had to pay hundreds of dollars to get my car off the back of this truck. Mm. Oh, bad taste in my mouth, that experience. But <laughs> Can't be good, Sue. So oh, I don't want to make yeah. this. A, no, a absolutely, thing. they're absolutely amazing. Annie, we're looking at this. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be shaking your head there. Not had a good experience, hey, Annie? Have we got you there, Annie? Um, oh no! Well, I, I just I'm in the pedigree. Yeah, can you yeah. hear me? Yes. I'm- Oh, oh, we might have just lost just you. Just lost it. And we've got a bit of a delay with any. Caroline said, though, <laughs> my husband fixes my car. <laughs> the praise me price is always high. <laughs> yes, yes, and it needs to be paid. It's a, <laughs> it's a bill that must be footed, Caroline. You just don't have a choice. I, I have a praise me price on a lot of things that I do, Suze, and and sometimes you just, quite frankly, it's not just whether you pay the bill, it's how you pay the bill that counts. <laughs> Annie, let's try you again. Has anyone ever, have you ever paid too much for mechanical work oh, and wondered if you get scammed? Well, the question is how would I know? I just don't know anything about mechanicals, so that's the thing. So that was what I was shaking my head about because I was thinking I just wouldn't know, to be honest. So I just go with a mechanic I've got a great relationship with and I just have a gut instinct that they're trustworthy. And and also on the accounts, they they itemise everything and I think that gives me some reassurance that they've actually done what they said they were going to do. And, yeah, so I, I feel that's okay. I think you've yeah. hit on a point there, which is I think it's like with any service industry, isn't it? It makes such a difference when you build a relationship with the person. So whether it's your mechanic or yeah. your doctor or anyone that you're sort of seeing regularly, dentist, anybody, it makes such a difference mm-hmm. when you have a relationship to feel like that you're not getting yeah. that rip off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. And they're lovely, like our, our mechanics are lovely community people and, you know, we just know that they're, they're good people. So, it, yeah, we trust good. them. Beautiful. I love that. All right. I'm sending a text text message to Susie at the moment. Right. Um, because we're gonna we're gonna give away some prizes very soon. Yeah. And, and I was going to try and avoid um uh, talking about it uh and, you know showing the the underbelly, but um we're gonna do getting to know you soon and okay. looking for some new categories. Oh. Uh, so we'll get to that shortly, Suze. Okay. So that way I don't have to text the message. In the meantime, though, let's take a look at a question. This is something that I think comes up quite a lot for people because diet is commonly yeah. discussed in society now and there's all these different ones that you can do, all mm-hmm. these different ways you can manage your weight, whether you're trying to gain weight mm-hmm. or lose weight or just maintain a healthy weight. There's all these different ideas that people have yeah. in how to do that. But Debbie's asked the question, what is one food that you've tried to give up eating mm-hmm. and were you successful and how long has it been? So many on the list. Yeah. So many on the list. The biggest one that I think fits this um, – category of question is bread like actually every part of me desires to not eat bread right but it's just so hard because everything is kind of made better when it's wrapped in some kind of <laughs> bready goodness. bread or wrap or, <laughs> yeah. or something it's just it's just this this thing that suddenly makes everything else around it taste better like what is it with bread is it just is this what carbs do but it I don't think potatoes do it the same way, but I think even potatoes taste better wrapped in bread. Mm. Like it's this weird thing, <laughs> like a chip sandwich, Suze. Like it's chips are already good, but even better when it's a chip sandwich. Like steak is amazing, but put it between two pieces of bread and it's just, oh, to die for. Like this is everything. It's just better. Salad, all sorts of things, just better between bread. So I've clearly struggled to give up bread. Yeah. <laughs> Desired. To lower my carbs, but this is just no, too hard. It's too hard. So the one thing for me is um, tinned spaghetti. What? I used to have tinned spaghetti and I used to have oh. tinned spaghetti jaffles yeah. uh, with cheese in them and amazing. Have you just, have you, you know, gone, oh, I need to give up tinned spaghetti or have you just grown up? Both probably. <laughs> 
because I no, I was still really? eating tin spaghetti after we had the kids at times because it was quick and easy and I didn't yeah. have to think too much about it. So, so did you choose to give it up or have yes, you just stopped? Yes, I actively Why? chose to give it up well, because because I thought about the Jaffa, what was going on with my gut, and so I was cutting out carbs. I was working with a sort of a nutritionist of sorts, and yeah. and so I was cutting out carbs and a a, a pasta sandwich <laughs> was just a bit too too heavy, too, on, the too heavy on the carbs so yeah. i deliberately Super. gave it up and then when i brought the bread yeah. back in i didn't bring the spaghetti yeah. back in yeah. yeah but the like everything about that is not natural because even the sauce that's plastic mm. it's melted plastic but you know as a kid there's just nothing greater than the the tin spaghetti on a jaffle that's yeah. producer semi have you had any food that you've had to kind of give up uh, yes. So when I had braces, I couldn't eat anything that would get stuck in the braces. So um, that was like a mechanical malfunction. I was right. not allowed to have uh, meat on the bones, any ribs or steak, uh, no popcorn, no chewing gum. So that was kind of like enforced on me. I don't know where that was a choice. <laughs> right. I would have been devastated if someone said you can't have meat in the same way. I would just... Oh. The next day after I got them removed, we were at like a barbecue yeah. restaurant in South Africa and I had the largest thing of ribs. I couldn't finish it, but I had it. Yeah. Oh, Aaron's just got me because I'm craving peanut butter at the moment. <laughs> Eric, I should say. Eric says, I don't eat peanut butter anymore because I used to chow down on an entire jar in one go. Uh, <gasps> oh, I just... see that Milo also is something else that I have given up. Because I would have too much in my Okay, go. Milo, not just in a, you know, like hot chocolate Milo, cold chocolate Milo, Milo on ice cream. Like that is, Milo <laughs> on ice cream is the gun. Like that is, oh, that's. I'm my, not hearing anything bad. Yeah, no, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing to give up here. There's nothing to give up. But Marty says, I have almost never have lollies anymore, even though I love them. I just love the dentist bills a lot less. <laughs> That's, that's it. <laughs> the dentist bills are not overly exciting. So let's get your thoughts on this. Is there a food that you have actually had to give up and how have you gone? Have you succeeded and what uh, what is it that uh, made you give it up in the first place? Russell, how have you gone with giving something up with food? It was cast upon me. I had to. Oh, now, right. This was a point in my life that was actually, it was a bit of a dark moment in my life. Um, we're talking late 80s. And I actually had gallbladder problems. So I had to drop all dairy. Every day I'd go to work and it was like someone was stabbing me in the gallbladder. So much pain. And I'd be mm. praying, oh, Lord. And my doctor just wanted to get in there and remove it. Yes, he wanted to become a surgeon and cut it out. And he was just starting to do basic surgery. Oh. And I didn't realize I was going to be a guinea pig. But, you know, I was praying, oh, Lord, I'm going to lose my job. I had to quit my home fellowship I was running. I had to. I was, I was really worried I was going to get sacked any day now because I just wasn't performing. I couldn't keep up with the workload. I, I, I was just going through it. So totally 100% all dairy products were gone out of my life. So that was a big major thing. I love cheese. So there's no cheese. There was, I had to have apricot nectar in my cereal. Then oh. the church, I went to this church, about 2,000 people, but it actually was really conservative. Um, there was no big, you know, rah, rah, rah. And I went there and there was this guy – People called him in America the Black Oral Roberts. But he was a really humble guy. I mean, extremely humble. And I was standing there and he was praying. Everybody had their eyes closed. And all of a sudden, whack, somebody pushed me really hard in the chest. And I got cranky because I was in pain. I opened my eyes. There was nobody around me for at least five rows. They were all out the front because I was at the back. And God had just hit me. The next day I woke up and I had pain. And God clearly spoke to me and said, you can either accept the healing or you can go back to having the pain. Since that day, I have never had a problem with the gallbladder. That was a, 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 an amazing moment. God just changed my whole life then. And I've enjoyed my dairy ever since. Yes, I have put on my not really skinny back then. But it was, it was just a, an amazing turnaround because for a whole year, mm. zero dairy. Mm, wow. Amazing. Interesting. Amazing right, Caroline, Caroline also talked about uh, the gallbladder. Um, Caroline says, uh, a deep fried uh, food, I was told my gallbladder would explode, which is a great motivator, which I can imagine is 
is a strong motivation for why to give up a certain food. But I, what I love right now is because Marty, we talked about before, he says, uh, you know, and, and I'll requote, I almost never have lollies anymore, even though I love them. I just love the dentist bills a lot less. Eric has responded and said, life lesson for Marty, you can't have a dentist bill if you never go. Um, <laughs> I think that's a, it's a solid point. Not great life advice generally, but a solid financial advice. Yeah, point there, Susan. I think. Mm, absolutely. Well, let's get another thought on this one, Luke. Let's see what Annie does. Annie. Mm, yes. Well, I, I'm celiac and I've also got a lactose intolerance. So that's, you know, that's there. But this all started because years ago I gave up sugar and it was just huge to stop eating sugar, um, added sugar to things. And, um, I couldn't re- believe how much I craved it. It was like I'd, I've never been a smoker, but it was like I'd given up cigarettes or something. And um, mm. I read somewhere that the that sugar affects the brain in the same place that if you took, um, say, heroin or cocaine, it's the same part of the brain that's stimulated by sugar. So I've since um, restricted it um, and found that I, I crave it a lot less. So I've just been quite careful yeah. and. But anyway, I, but anyway, the start of that process was that because I quit sugar and it made such a difference, I went to end up going to a gut specialist and she said, well, yeah, maybe there's other things going on. And that's when we discovered I had celiac disease and so on. So I feel oh, I feel I, much better. I, I, it's tragic, isn't it, that I can't eat bread, it, you know, I eat this other stuff, but yes. it tastes less. They're developing it better. Like it tastes less and less like cardboard as time goes by, which is great. Um, but, yeah, I feel so much better. We've just lost Annie a little bit there, but I look. It is tragic. Bread is bread is beautiful, mm. um, and I love it so so much. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, that was. I know there's a lot of much. other things that were really important. What you said there, but it made me. You know, but I I I have I gave up having sugar in my coffees yeah. years ago, and I've never gone back to it. And it's been I enjoy my coffee without any sweetener, yeah, um, or any syrups or anything. Which is else. good. It's plain. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I yeah. changed to oat milk, and I've lost weight because of it. I was having a lot of milk. Yeah. You're, you're, you're <laughs> a big, big fan of the, the milk. Eric, as a lactose intolerant person, I'm supposed to give up dairy, but I still haven't. <laughs> but that's um, it's hard. Some uh, foods are just really hard to give up when they've been yeah. a, such a staple yeah. in the diet that you've had. Yeah, uh, mm. Caroline says uh, she's the same, and the people around her aren't happy about her choices. <laughs> <laughs> I think we worked out a symptom or two. It's coming out of Caroline um, <laughs> on the back of those uh, decisions. We want to give away some prizes, Suze, and play getting to know you. So let's play with Alicia. Okay. Um, and Suze has been working hard in the background, making sure <laughs> that uh, she's got uh, some questions to go. Alicia, we want to give you some free stuff and things. Um, are you ready to, to answer and go under the microscope of Suzy's hard-hitting interrogation? Sure. Let's do this. I'm going to ask you five questions. You've got 30 seconds to answer them. They're all about you. So you already have the right answer. We don't know what the right answer is. You do. Yeah. Um, but at the end of it, if your answers come close to matching Luke's, well, yeah. regardless, we'll probably make you a yeah, winner. We'll probably will. <laughs> um, can, can you throw me a pen so yes. I can write them down as we go? Thank Absolutely. you very much. All right. Uh, we are getting to know uh, Alicia and your 30 seconds starts right now. Would you rather be swimming or sunbathing? Swimming. A big party or a small gathering? Ooh, um, small gathering. Would you like to relax at the end of the day in the clothes that you've worn that day or jump in your PJs? Clothes I've worn that day. Sky, skydiving or scuba diving? Mm-hmm. Scuba diving. And would you rather watch a movie at home or at the theatre? Depends on who I'm with. Oh, okay. Nice little right. fence wait. sit for the last one. I can't wait to get to that caveat there at the <laughs> end and to see who's in and who's out of uh, going to the movies. But first of all, the first question, Sue. Swimming or sunbathing? Um, and you said swimming. Mm-hmm. Uh, t- did you say swimming? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I. Look, I agree because you you can be getting the sun while you're swimming. Like you get both of them. I love both. Yes. You love swimming. I love being in the water. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. Big party or small gathering? Alicia said small gathering. Yeah, I'm with you. Small gathering here as well. I just people people can just be a bit too much sometimes. I'm mm. probably the one that's too much for everybody else, but 
I like I like having good conversations with. I end up only having conversations with a handful of people anyway. So yeah. might as well make it small. Now we talked about relaxing at the end of the day. Do you do it in the clothes from that day or your PJs? Alicia's in the clothes from the day. Do you do you wear PJs or do you just? No? I don't have no, any. Mm-hmm. No, you you are a PJ person. Yeah, but I'm not. I just it's never been. It's never mm. been a thing. Skydiving. <laughs> Oh yeah, skydiving or scuba scuba diving was the next question, Luke. Well, it's very easy for me. Uh, you said what, Alicia? Scuba. I just love being I, in the water. I, scuba diving. I just love being in the water. So why would I choose anything other than scuba diving? Yeah, and why jump out of a perfectly good plane if you don't have to? Uh, but I I probably didn't know whether I probably would have said skydiving at one point. But when I burst my eardrum, they told me I wasn't allowed to scuba dive. And so, like, every part of me then went, well, I want to scuba dive now. Like, and I was like, I've had to give up scuba diving for my burst eardrum. Not that I ever had any plans to, but now I want to just to say, ha-ha, I can scuba dive again. <laughs> and I think, I think I'd look good in the, in the wetsuit. In the so, wetsuit. You know. <laughs> uh, and the last one, movie at home or in the theatre. A little fancied of an answer from Alicia who said, it depends who I'm with. Who wouldn't you want to go to the movies with? So it's more about the fact that if I'm with people, I'm perfectly happy to not go to the cinema and just chill at home and do it. But if I'm watching a movie on my own, it's nothing special. And so I'd rather go to the movies and see it in a cinema that it feels special still. Yeah, okay. That's interesting because I would have – I kind of would – the other way, if I'm just watching it by myself, I might as well just do it at home and then there's no effort and it's just – you might as well keep it simple, whereas, mm. you know, social, go out and have some fun oh, and there you go. have an experience together. That's interesting. There we go. Well, congratulations. We're going to give you $50 to spend at program sponsor, gracifyme.com. Buying a gift can be stressful because you want something that communicates a great message to the person that you're giving to, but you don't have all the time and money in the world, but the solution is right there for you. At program sponsor, gracifyme.com, where you get to choose the perfect gift, like a handcrafted gorgeous journal, and hand select some affirmation cards to go with them as a gift. Uh, to feel great about the gift that you buy for someone special and to add value to their day, shop at gracifyme.com. you got $50 to spend. Well done, Alicia. Thank you. That's awesome. All right. Let's get into our agenda, Suze. Our next question <laughs> is um, about I raised something... a question about whether we should ask this yeah, question. Yeah, and I, it was the most bizarre reason why you thought maybe we shouldn't talk about this. Yeah. Because you kind of had this feeling to, to, to maybe say. Well, I think, I mean, we've got people who listen who are vegetarian or vegan. <laughs> isn't it? But you seem to imply we have. Meat heavy oriented content and conversation I on feel our show. Like you talk about meat a lot. We barely mention meat. No. And you went, well, more than vegetables. No, we talk about potatoes and cheese all the time. Not about meat. I feel like you talk about meat a lot. No, in our f- personal life. And that's just because I'm, I'm not vegetarian. I'm a carnival. <laughs> I want to <laughs> eat meat. But this is interesting because it says, what's your favorite part of uh, the chicken to eat? Because the chicken and some form of poultry like this is unique in that. The meat at different parts is very specifically quite different in its texture. I mean, in, in every animal it is, there's different cuts and whatever. But but this is there's only there's two major parts that are very different textured meat, the brown meat and the white meat. And I'm a I'm I know every part of the chicken's carcass. As a seven years of pulling chickens apart for working for Red Rooster, I'm a connoisseur of chicken soup. Yeah. So what's your favorite part of the chicken to eat, Sue? The curry sauce. <laughs> <laughs> the curry sauce. There's no question for me when it comes to general chicken that the leg or the thigh carries more juice and flavour, and you know it's a it's a richer flavour of of meat. But when it comes to deep fried KFC, <laughs> I find it too juicy, too fatty, and too squirty, and I prefer the breast or the the, the white meat when it comes to the deep fried chicken. So mm. it depends on how I have it. Every other way, it's Probably uh, predominantly a kebab's probably better with a bit of white meat sort of in there, the the, the breast part of it. Actually, but, when you say fried chicken, my favorite bit of fried chicken is the crumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you telling me you're not a chicken fan? I don't mind chicken, I'm happy. I like chicken. We eat chicken a lot for you not I, I to do. really like it. I do, but how it's cooked, I it makes a difference. All right, All right. okay. Let's let's <laughs> set, producer Sammy, let's go to you oh, first, okay. actually. Producer Sammy, um, is there a favorite part of the chicken to eat? 
I'd have to say with the chicken breast because just like it's so versatile. You can like shred it, have it in a wrap, have it in a salad. You can fry it. One of my favorite go-tos is just like smothering it in balsamic vinegar. Oh. So there's lots of different ways. So it's just, yeah, it's like one of the, the parts of the chicken that you can just do whatever with. Mm. Okay, Bubba. Yep. She just sounded like Bubba from Forrest Gump talking about chicken. Yeah, and it does all sound good. I, I would, yeah, I'm a white, chicken, I'm white meat over brown meat chicken. too, actually. So. Chicken. Chicken popcorn. Stop. Just stop, <laughs> Olga. Wait, chicken, Olga. <laughs> yes, uh, my favorite part would be the thyme, the dum- drumstick. Ah, the drumstick. The drumstick. Yes, that classic. Yeah. <laughs> we have an awkward scenario, Olga, where our kids all prefer a drumstick. I'm like, I'm waiting for someone to invent a three-legged chicken mm. so that they can all have a drumstick each. But there's unfortunately, they only have two legs and we've got three children. Yeah. We didn't, oh. we didn't, we didn't do the sums. Oh. <laughs> oh. You'd have, they'll have to take turns. Yeah. <laughs> one week, the one has a drumstick and the next week the other. Yeah, it's so easy the to convince them of out. things. <laughs> how do you exactly. like how do you like your chicken cooked? How do you like to have it? I don't mind actually. I like drumsticks on the barbecue, deep fried, grilled. Um, yeah, drumstick and the thyme, Maryland's are great, yeah. Any old yeah. way, says Olga. I love it. Eric loves the nugget. <laughs> <laughs> so do our kids. The only thing they'll have the in exchange part. of a drumstick is the nugget. The nugget. Like, one of them eats his nuggets by chewing off all the crumb first. And, yeah. and it's weird. The naked nugget looks awkward and unusual. It does. It does. It's just odd. It does. Yeah. Annie, do you have a favourite part of the chicken? Oh, I love the breast when it's cooked in um, za'atar flavouring, which is like a Middle Eastern. It's got thyme and sesame and it's just yummy. Just You cook it very gently and it means it doesn't dry. Because, you know, some people fry their chicken breasts like there's no tomorrow and then they're all tough and stringy. If you actually cook it mm. on a really low heat... It's really tender and juicy. Just oh, a yeah. tip. Very nice. Mm. Yes, you don't want to, you don't want to dry out the chicken breast in particular. No. You want to make sure that Mm-mm. you keep the juice in there. And we would. I remember when I was, yeah, in uh, you know, cooking them at, at Red Rooster back in the day, we would be even scooping up the fat that was dripping out and rebasting it back in to keep the juices to keep the moisture in there. It was, um, mm. you know, at the time, I thought it was disgusting as having to pour fat back on the chicken. <laughs> Now I appreciate There's lots of flavouring fat. There's lots of flavouring fat. So, yes. Yeah. 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 That's um, why we love it. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. I accidentally hit the button there, Annie. Um, we, Eric says um, that uh, he said the nugget. Caroline says she prefers the, the breasts, but uh, really likes to, uh, like a good chew on a good wing. Oh, mm. The wings. I do like nibbling around the bones and sucking them dry. Mm. That's very good. You That's do. Very- you do enjoy Boot that. shaped nuggets are the superior shape of nugget. Boot shaped? That's what Eric said. Mm. Is there such a thing as boot shaped? There you must be. And he likes, uh, he likes uh. them how he likes them. Alicia, how do you like your chicken? Uh, Eric and I were talking about this this morning, and we both agreed that we very much like the nuggets. Um, <laughs> he's right here if you want to talk about the boot shaped nugget. What is a boot shaped nugget, Eric? So I actually looked into this a couple of years ago. There are five regulation nugget like shapes. So if you go to any McDonald's <laughs> around the world, they sell the same five like shapes of nugget, and one of them is a boot, and it specifically looks like a boot. <laughs> looks like. I like the fact that you started with there are five regulated type shapes of nuggets. Like there's an official nugget industry that regulates the, the shapes that nuggets are allowed to come in. Well, yeah, I think there's like a standardised thing across the board in McDonald's across the world. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, Carl's Jr. messes with the system because he's star, the, the, a, a regulated official shape of a nugget. Mm. Like outside of McDonald's, star nuggets are the best nuggets. Right. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That's, that's fair. Like you, you sound like a nugget, nugget connoisseur, Eric. You've got things sorted. You've done your nugget research. Uh, sure. If I ever have any requirement for nugget-based knowledge, you're the man I'm going to be 100%. In, in touch with. That's me, nugget connoisseur. The other thing yeah. that he said, favorite chicken is free chicken, and so I combined <laughs> those, and I bought him nuggets. So he got free nuggets yeah. this 
Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, and, and not to be mistaken nice. for free range, just free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No cost. I like it. I never thought I'd spend so much time talking about the regulated nugget shape, Suze. But no, here we are. That's really cool to Li- know. Living life to the full. <laughs> I like it when other people do the research and you yeah. just get to learn from them. All right. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Let's uh, get to know Annie and give her a chance to, to win some prizes. Okay. So, some free stuff up for grabs. Annie, are you ready to play Getting to Know You? Okay. Okay. I can do this. I can do this. All right. You can do it. You can. I'm going to ask you five questions. I guarantee you're going to get all five right. <laughs> yes, you will. Because it's all about you. You've got 30 seconds to answer them. And, okay. Uh, we go. We're going to get to know you. All right. You ready to go? Yeah, ready to go. You're going to play. You're going to play. No, I don't have the buttons. Oh, you don't have it. Okay. No, because I changed the system and I just realised the buttons on the other one. Okay. So, but thanks for highlighting the mistake that I've made. I I brushed over it last time. You can do the whole. Your time starts now. Then. Okay, we're going to give some free stuff (laughs) to any and your thirty seconds to be under the microscope of Susie starts right now. Do you prefer to dine in or delivery at home? Ooh, I think delivery at the moment. Yep. Do you prefer to work alone or in a team? Team. A bushwalk or a beach walk? Beach every time. Beaches are beautiful. They're all weather, they're gorgeous, aren't they? Well, and when you're walking, is it music or a podcast you would listen to? Music, definitely. Keep the beat going. And the big one, cups in the cupboard, are they right side up or upside down? They're upside down because I just there's a little thing called the cockroach that just seems to love my drawer very much. So they are flipped. Yeah. Nice. All right, let's go through the delivery versus dine in. And you said delivery at the moment. Um, has it has obviously been something different in the past? Oh, I love eating out. Like I lived in Melbourne for years and I loved it and Hobart. So it was great eating out. But um, yeah, COVID has sort of made us be a bit more at home bodies, I suppose. But, yeah, it will get back to going out again, I'm sure. Yep. I initially wrote down delivery, but I actually think eating out like is actually my preference. Mm, yeah. It's just delivery it's sometimes lovely. just fits my lifestyle. But I, yeah, we I don't like do the, it as much. the stopping and not having to clean up after myself. Oh, I like that very yeah. much too. Yeah. Yeah. Working alone or in a team, Annie, you said in a team. For sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, oh, fun, it's, it's fun to do stuff on your own sometimes too, but um, it's just you just get different perspectives from other people and, you know, you get to laugh about things much more than you do when you're on your own, I think. Yeah, so. I'm a little bit torn because I, uh, on the one hand, people are annoying. On the other hand, they're also <laughs> they're also energising. You like work I with have, me. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a balance, isn't uh, it? Yeah, that's why I brought this in people. Not person. Person is annoying. Oh, uh, producer Sammy's weird. here as well. <laughs> I like her. <laughs> Bushwalk or beach walk? You like to go on the beach, Annie. Luke, where do you yeah, like to go? I also like to walk on the beach with a fishing rod in my hand yeah. and mostly oh, standing that's still. Yeah. Oh, to try and catch fish. Yes. How yeah, did you that, How did you go with, with your – now I missed this because I, I had surgery a few weeks ago. How did you go uh, with your, ca- your catch fishing trip? Yeah, no, like at the moment I'm losing weight um, and that's not a coincidence. But, um, right. <laughs> well, just, uh, so it didn't work out so well, have you? I've had some good days. I'm still in training. I've had some good days and okay. uh, most, of them been, most of them have just been learning how not to do it. Um, okay, so we'll that's there. good. That's good. It's good. If we'll you can rule there. out the things that don't work. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Which is almost everything yeah. I do. Yeah. Right. Yeah, sure. uh, music or podcast for a walk? And he said music. What is it yeah. for you, Luke? I yeah. refuse to answer. It's audio book for me. Audio book. Okay. Well, oh, before. it's just a story. Yeah, okay. That can well, be good too. Sometimes it's not the right story. Challenge, stimulating stuff. That mm. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's fun to bop along. Yeah, 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 I agree. I'll go for I'll know, go for music. I've become so impatient lately that I listen to my audio books and watch my YouTube videos on one point five speed. Like I can't even wait for them to speak in real time. Yeah. Mm. So they'll always say the bobby yeah. they're going to like this and they're going to be always getting a little bit monkey. Anyway. You gotta get your content in. You do. Yeah. Cups in the yeah. cupboard. Upside down for Annie. Mm. I, I was – mum told me the same thing you said, Annie, about insects and dust and cockroaches yeah. and upside down. And so I don't know. I've heard arguments and counter arguments of it, but I, but I upside down for me still for since I was a kid. It's just I can't break the habit. Mm. 
Second cabin, isn't it? Yeah. So, the, so I had uh, someone at a conference centre complaining about the cups being upside down because they were heavily weighted at the base. So he's hit oh. on the table and because the weight was at the top part of the what was the base of the cup, but it was upside down. They fell over really easy. And oh. he, sm- he smashed a glass. And so he was telling me he went round and turned all of them right side up mm. so that he – yeah, and I, went, and I thought that was good because he was only a, a really thin man and his hip bumped the table. I can imagine if I walked past it, <laughs> be smashed glasses everywhere. Bull in a china shop. Yeah, that's what it would be like. Hey, congratulations. $50 to spend for you, Annie. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Great message for the person that you're giving to, but you don't have all the time and money in the world. Well, at program sponsor Grace to Find Me dot com, you get to choose the perfect gift, like a coffee bean gift oh, or a coffee. retro eighties mug, yes. and you get to hand select some affirmation cards to communicate value and honor. So feel great about That's the gift. So you Add value and honor to their day, Annie, and shop at Grace Find Me dot com. You got fifty dollars to spend. How awesome! Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure. Let's get to this question from okay. Alison. Mm-hmm. Do you find it easier to study or do housework when you're listening to music? And if so, what type of music or is there some other thing that helps you to focus? Yes. It's interesting. Yes? Mm. Okay, what? Music when I'm doing housework. Okay. Yes. Well, and I think we've created a system where music during housework has been, we use it as our timer. Yeah. And so it takes away the overwhelm and intimidation. So we create a playlist depending on how long we're going to clean for and say, all right, you know, we're going to build a, with five songs on the playlist, which is a, a code for about 15 minutes worth yeah, of cleaning. A, fi- a three song or a five song clean. But instead of saying yeah. 15 minutes, we say five songs and just make sure that five songs add up to 15 minutes and then we clean while we get through the, the mm. list. And and I think it's, there's something really cool about that. But when it comes to, when it comes to everything else, look, I don't know. For me, I often, and I would often work with a laptop with a TV show on, and it's just, just having some noise in the background, whether it's music or something else, just for some reason. And it, and it didn't help me focus because it distracted me at times, but it was like I need, I'm going to be distracted anyway, and it just gave me the thing that I just went from one to the other in my mind. And But I, I struggled. I realized that I was watching a show with subtitles, and I couldn't do that and work on the computer at the yes. same time. So Narcos had the wait, Suze, because mm. I couldn't keep up with the subtitles and keep doing my work, mm. but just where I can listen to the show in the back. Yeah, it's it's helpful to have that yeah. extra stimulation. We want to hear from you. Alison's question, do you find it easier to study or to do the housework when listening to music? And if you do, what type of music or is there something else that helps you to focus? Yeah. Russell, how about for you? Do you find it easier when there's music playing in the background? If I'm doing some physical work, yes, definitely I need the music pumping. Um, like as in loud and proud sort of thing. Um, not loud enough to upset the neighbours, but loud enough so I can hear it. Um, but when it comes to the study sort of things, because I came from a large family, we actually all learnt to tune out to whatever was going on in the family. Yeah. So even if my brothers were in the hall fighting or whatever, because it's all boys, I wouldn't hear it. The only thing I ever heard was mum yell out, food's on the table, dinner's ready, boys. And instantly I would hear that. So I'd block out everything. So even at work, someone would be near me and I'm working on some mathematics, I wouldn't hear them until they tap me on the shoulder. Um, so my brain has learned to block things out totally so mm. to focus on what I'm doing. Um, but, yeah, if I'm making something outside and I've got power tools going, I, I, I like the music. Yeah, I just oh, isn't that it. interesting? That, that difference between the physical work and the mental work. That's cool. Uh, That's really cool. Um, what about Olga? Is there, do you listen to music in the background when you're trying to focus and do anything, or is there? What do you do? Yeah, when doing stuff uh, like housework and stuff, I'm always a music person. But if I have to study, then it would have to be in silence. Mm-hmm. Ah, so so, so it's just it's absolutely anything else is just going to be a distracted, just in the zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like uh, quiet time when I'm focusing on things, but like every other time, like cleaning the house or uh, just chilling, must have my music. Yeah. yeah. And I oh. mind all sorts of music. Yeah. Uh, we got a, a comment from Caroline who, when she's doing the housework, she will go from, ain't nothing but a hound dog to excellent <laughs> and tonight. And Metallica to, to, Metallica to, to Elvis. <laughs> Sonia, how about you? When you're doing housework, do you like having music going on in the background? Yes, I do. 
um, this morning I was cleaning up the lounge room and I wanted to put the Xbox on when the kids had disconnected it. Um, but I find it really helpful to focus and time goes quicker when you have stuff on the background, especially worship music. That should be that should be something I play a lot more, um, when, especially when the kids are not around, like change the spiritual atmosphere in the home. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, very good. Uh, uh, d- d- yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a little. It's a little quiet, but we're uh, able to, to get there and get you. The um the kids the kids changing the Xbox um cables. That's not very nice. No. It's a bit unfortunate. It does happen though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they mess with my stuff, Suze. <laughs> mess with my stuff. Eric says uh, he has uh, Bluetooth hearing aids, so it's always music on for him. Mm. Always music on. Uh, which is good. Uh, uh, looks, producer Sammy, do you 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 have do you do podcasts? Is that uh, what, sometimes, or is um, that just when you're supposed to be working? <laughs> I do music when I'm supposed to be working because it's like the distraction. But yeah, if I need to have something in the background while my hands are moving, then my brain can be occupied with something else. Yeah. So I've I've seen you at work and you've had the headphones in and you've been ignoring my request for coffee and you know it's been <laughs> devastating. Oh, I wasn't playing music at that time. Yeah. <laughs> Just ignoring me. That's, <laughs> that's good. It's good to know. Good to know where everything sits. Now, before we say goodbye today, we do have a bit of an interesting question we want to explore with you because oh. there's a book that we've been looking at that our producer, Sammy, who yeah. is here with us at the moment, yeah. uh, really super fond of, really very excited about. And when it came to reviewing this book, Sammy, you had a very particular way of yeah. uh, reviewing this particular book we've been looking at. Finger and tingling. Finger tingling because was you, the you, words you, that you used. You did this creepy, well, it was, she did this creepy finger tapping thing. It was usually done when someone evil is giving their evil dastardly plan. But for you, it was the excited gesture on, on you know, this book was amazing and you couldn't wait to tell me about it. Absolutely. So, yeah, I don't know if I kind of started that or whether Luke did, no, but it, it was, was just all of the excitement. Like, he had mo- to. Yeah. It was mostly me mocking her that the finger tingling statement came mm. out. Um, yeah, but, what's new? <laughs> but okay, but you are, you're a book lover, and so, therefore, you're often describing and trying to give sort of, you know, like not so much officially giving reviews, but you're just telling me, oh, I read this book. or And you – so there's the, the normal cliche, you know, will have you on the edge of your seat kind of statements. But it really highlighted when you did this finger tapping thing, like this finger tingling, like there could be some unusual ways to positively review some things. Absolutely. When all that excitement is bubbling and something is just so good that you need to share it with the world, how do you describe that? Yeah. You know, like, because I think that, you know, when you go, it'll make the the hair on your neck stand up. Like I go, well, I don't particularly, I don't ever see the hair on the back of my neck. So I don't know. But I have seen the hairs coming out my nose. So, I mean, it'll make your nose hairs (laughs) Um, curl or twirl or stand up or there'll be something to do with nose hairs in there we could get. I think about reviewing food yeah. and when you have something that delicious goes in your mouth and it's so good, it just sort of is so big it sort of needs to come out again. So I'm oh. thinking it's like happiness flying out of your ears when oh. something good goes in your mouth. It's happiness. That usually happens when I eat curry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't call it happiness, but something's yeah. coming. Yeah. Other, other people will say there's different things coming out of their body in different ways when they eat curry, but um, maybe not. Oh, this is not where I expected yeah. this to go. But yeah. unusual reviewing terms. You started it. Something good. Yeah. How would you say something's really, really good? Yeah. Sonia, have you got a way that you would express that something you're experiencing is really, really good? Can you hear us, Sonia? Well, no, I think we've we've lost you. Lost you the sound. Oh, no, you're muted. There we go. Unmuted. Hey. Sorry, I didn't realize you were talking to me. (laughs) How do you express when something's really, really good? From unusual methods. Yes, unusual ways of saying it. Uh, when, like, food or we, we talk of stool? It could be anything. You're talking anything. Um, I meet a lot of people because I do Uber driving. So I kind of incorporate everything that I know when I'm talking to people in, in a way um, 
that I can like get them interested in stuff. So whether it's like my faith in that, I'll often talk about books and like really good books that I've read or whatever, and then how that works in everyday life um, with what's relevant to what's happening in the world today, and then like come at that angle about Christianity. So I find it actually because I'm evangelist. I find every day like that just God pops opportunities in my way to share like ex- excellent knowledge like about books or something um, that will help others kind of question life and question Christianity. Yeah. Very good. Very cool. Let's go, Alicia. Alicia, uh, Sammy described the book as finger tingling or she jested the finger tingling how good it was. Is there an unusual way that you might describe something as good? I don't know. I can't think of anything right now but in my house the three of us housemates we have very different ways of reacting to good things um right. one of the housemates just flaps his hands the other one just screams and then i just do this really weird big smile and go quiet <laughs> hand uh, flappingly hand, good hand is good flappingly good mm. hand flapping it's a it's it's a real hand flapper that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah, it. It's the ultimate. It's the ultimate hand flapper. <laughs> yeah, ultimate yeah. flapper. Love it. The ultimate hand flapper. That's that, and that's going to now take off in your in your your house. I'm sorry, Caroline. I don't know if this is crossing a line, but she's talking about something that might be suspenseful, being butt clenching. <laughs> Yeah. That's certainly, I mean, it's descriptive and it creates a picture, that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, not necessarily a picture any of us have asked to have in our mind, no. but uh, thank you, Caroline. <laughs> I appreciate you getting involved. We've got some some free books to give away. If you have an unusual way to describe or review something, some positive, some hand-flappingly good, some finger-tingling good, what is something that might be able to be described from your experience of how you respond to something's good? You can SMS through to 0417 Seven text through o four one seven four triple five three seven. What a hand flapper that is! <laughs> Just to add to Caroline's comment, yeah. For anyone who's interested in the book, there is some butt clenching suspense in there. Oh! <laughs> Didn't I still? I was just starting to get that image out of my head, Sammy. <laughs> but thanks, thanks. You're and, welcome. Yeah, well, that's exactly what Caroline said on the message too. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks a lot for nothing. <laughs> I think that's just about all we have time for today. Thank you for those who've joined us and been a part of the live show today. We'll be back next week again with another one. Have a great day.